Good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Lots going on and I would encourage you to stick it right here on Marfogan Weather on YouTube. We will be continuing to look at not just the local picture but also the global picture as well. We have got the uh, Global Weather and Climate Report live this Sunday at 4pm. I will leave a link in the description below. But you can see here uh, of uh, coolweather.com, lots of record warmth extend from uh, northwest Africa all the way up the western side of the UK. We've got some cool records uh, showing up across uh, the pond in North America. That I would expect to start to see drifting east and southeastwards over the course of the weekend. It is potentially the coldest end to November, beginning of December for the United States uh, since 2001. So, uh, yeah, we're increasing the cold over eastern North America. We've got uh, some very mild conditions now moving northwards over the western side of Europe here. So we've got colder sinking south on one side of the Atlantic and a uh, very warm subtropical air lifting north on the other side of the Atlantic. But uh, this month of November has really been quite a remarkable one. Uh, through the first 11 days of the month, uh, so essentially the first half of November was record warm and dry. This was the first 10 days of November seen by CDAS 0.5, and uh, we had uh, very mild conditions across the uh, UK, Ireland. Uh, that central swathe of Europe was uh, colder than average, extending from the low countries all the way to Turkey, as can be seen here, but very warm. Scandinavia and down across uh, the southwest of Europe as well. The past 10 days has looked like this. So we've obviously had uh, several nights uh, sub uh, freezing uh, across pretty much the, the board, but we've had uh, multiple nights of double digits below freezing. Remember, uh, since 2016, we've not had a November night in double digits below freezing. There's been at least four, I think, from what I can remember this month. Look at Iceland, uh, bitterly cold conditions here. And for the month as a whole, given how warm the first half of the month is, quite a remarkable turnaround. Average to even slightly below average in a few spots across the UK. Notice here, slightly warmer than average across Ireland and Northern Ireland as well. But the, a remarkable turnaround here at Marfogan Weather HQ as well. Minus 6.4 yesterday morning at daybreak. This morning, we rose to... Uh, between 10 and 11 Celsius, so a remarkable 24-hour flip around. The majority of yesterday was a uh, uh, sub-freezing, and this afternoon we got close to 13 Celsius. And we may even see slightly warmer than that still as we progress through the course of the weekend coming up. So uh, you can see we've got, um, this is off the, the Met Office uh, model of uh, the weather outlook, and you can see that uh, as we play through the loop here, We've got a frontal system associated with uh, with low pressure to the northwest, high pressure now sliding to the east, south to southwesterly winds, and the temperature had risen significantly. In fact, let's have a quick look at that of medial seal play through uh, back to yesterday, and this was the the temperature profile at ten to five UTC last night, uh, close to freezing, if not slightly below across northern areas north central areas of the uk uh, as a whole we're seeing temperatures stuck in low single figures but the uh, cast your eyes to the south of ireland that was the harbinger of things to come during the course of last night 15 celsius was uh, being recorded in the southwest but play through the the loop and you can see here the significant rise in temperature now look at pay attention to that uh, the time up in the north uh, the top right hand corner Top left hand corner, should I say. You can see here as we play through the overnight period, the temperatures were on the rise. And uh, like I said, you know, minus one when I left for work last night, plus 10 by the time I, re I returned home this morning. And as the night wore on, the temperatures slowly climbed. They were slow to do so, but they eventually did get there. And you know, by 10 to 6 this morning here, UTC, we're talking about temperatures close to double figures. Uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, well in the double figures. In, in fact, we had a 13 Celsius at this time. We had also 14 Celsius in the northwest of Wales. And uh, yeah, uh, ch chilly air conditions under clear skies, lighter winds across the east of the country. Eastern Scotland as well was actually uh, reasonably warm, but they are cold, should I say, uh, zero to plus two. But look at the uh, Altahara, uh, eight 
We had Stornoway at 12. We had the Old Bay at 12 as well. And generally, it was the strongest winds on the West Coast that uh, generated the, uh, the, the the rapid rise in temperature. But uh, we do have uh, some fairly milder at the moment. This is the current temperatures. So even as the sun has long dropped below the horizon, we've still got the uh, as high as uh, 12.7 at, uh, at Altenhara. We've got the uh, 12s, uh, both Kinloss and Lossiemouth. We've got the uh, 13, even 14 Celsius across parts of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And again, over eastern Scotland, only uh, two point four Strathallan. What a contrast that is actually uh, between the two point four Strathallan and twelve point seven uh, at Altnahara. Uh, but the clear skies, lighter winds, means that we've got the uh, colder temperatures in the east of the UK. Now, as we progress through the course of the next twenty four hours or so, we're going to see that frontal system. Lifting northwards, uh, southerly winds continuing. We've got some heavy rainfall moving in across Ireland and Northern Ireland. That is eventually going to spread its way in across the top of the UK. This was actually during the course of today, I beg your pardon. I'm thinking this was yes, uh, tomorrow, but um, I'm getting my days confused. But you can see here that they, as we move into the early hours of the morning, southwesterly winds, temperatures are going to still hold up, probably in double figures during the overnight tonight, actually. Then as we play through the course of Saturday, we've got a few showers to speak about, but generally speaking, we've got one frontal system that moves through early on Sunday, according to the, the, the Met Office model. Then as we play through, you notice here we start to see a little bit of a change in direction of that precipitation. It starts to turn more northwestly. So we've got a frontal system that moves through during the course of Sunday, turns the winds more northwestly, and we're back in the colder air. So this is a weather whiplash. We're seeing the rise in temperature at the moment after the cold yesterday, but we're going to see the return of cold as we move towards the early portions of next week. And we've got snow showers running uh, south um, as we progress through. And then as we move into the day on, on Tuesday, we've got the next frontal system moving in as it bumps into the cold air because we see outbreaks of snow in West Highland. Looking at uh, the temperatures in particular, so I've had 15, 16 possibly through the course of today in a few spots. Wouldn't be surprised if we'll see a 16 tomorrow, even along that Murray Coast, northwest highlands with the west to southwesterly winds blowing over the top of the hills. But uh, very mild conditions during the overnight tonight. This is uh, as we progress through the course of this evening. You notice here we're still holding on to upper single figures, low uh, double figures through the course of the evening. And then as we move through the course of tomorrow, we've got widespread 10 to 14 Celsius across England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Very mild conditions associated with that southerly flow. But it's actually along that Murray coast that it would not surprise me, uh, as well as parts of the West Highlands, if we get somewhere hit 15 Celsius, possibly a 16. Then this is the interesting thing. As we progress through the course of Sunday, still mild, still got 12, 13 Celsius in Vernest to Elgin, as can be seen here. But then as we progress through the course of Sunday evening, in comes the colder air, and we could essentially go from 15 or 16 during the course of Sunday afternoon to temperatures starting Monday morning, minus 4, minus 5, even minus 6 Celsius. So this is a dramatic change in terms of, you know, cold to warm, back to cold again. Now, I want to show you another couple of aspects here to consider um, as we move and look at the slightly longer term pattern now i want to show you in particular this is off the gfs model here and i've showed you the mjo stuff it is rotating through the milder phases at the moment we've got a stretched polar vortex which is uh, essentially allowing that arctic discharge out of the arctic into the uh, eastern north america this is the upcoming five days according to the gfs ensemble milder than average conditions uk ireland especially western europe as a whole here now, as we move towards the day 6 through 10, you can start to see cooling taking place, especially across northern UK. But once we get to the 11 to 15 day, we've got a trend. This is the period of uh, 9 through 14th of December. And there's a bit of a kind of consensus now starting to show up in the medium range of the modelling showing a colder look to the middle portions of December. This is actually slightly earlier than what I would have anticipated, if I'm being quite honest with you. Now, if we look at the uh, ECM extended here, this is the upcoming seven days, and this is the 
upper chart here. So this is the upper level pattern at 500 millibars. We've got the deep negative over eastern North America, bitterly cold conditions. We're going to see record-breaking snowfall in the Great Lakes. We're going to be talking about that in the Global Weather uh, Report live on Sunday. But uh, we've also got uh, extreme snowfall across parts of the Koreas and China as well. We'll look at that extreme rainfall in, uh, in Thailand associated with that MJO, by the way. So we're going to be looking at all that as we go uh, into Sunday afternoon. But look at this here. So this is the upcoming seven days. We've got actually positive heights largely over the UK and Ireland at the moment. Remember in yesterday's video I said, deep in trough over eastern North America, I would have expected to see a stronger jet then extending from North America towards Western Europe with a battle between the jet moving in from the Atlantic and high pressure trying to lift north from the Azores from Iberia up into the UK and Ireland. I still think we've got that battle during the course of next week. Now, we start off next week on a cold note, high pressure, back to kind of what we've seen a few days ago. But interestingly enough, as we play through this loop, pay close attention to the high over uh, over the eastern North Atlantic and, and Western Europe here. Watch as that trough out of North America shifts eastwards. It's actually going to force the pull westwards of the high, which is interesting. This is the period now, 4th through the 11th. Watch the high start to kind of back westwards into the North Atlantic. And this is quite an interesting uh, evolution of pattern here. Still got the negative over eastern North America. So this is a cool first half of December, according to the ECM extended. But notice the ridge over the UK and Ireland backing westwards here towards the North Atlantic. Does it try and poke its way up towards Greenland? But it looks as if we've got more of a northwesterly component to the mean flow around the top of that high, which uh, would be a, a cooler theme for the UK and Ireland. Then continue to play it through. You notice here that we're starting to see the positive over the North Atlantic. Not Notice it's not lifting up towards Greenland, which is interesting. Could be a, 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 a chilly, uh, cold northwesterly maritime flow as opposed to Arctic air. But we'll watch how this pattern evolves. Remember, this is starting to get into the time frame that I've thought MJO moving back into the cold phases. We could start to see more the return of a, a negative AO, NAO pattern. So this time frame here would definitely make sense. What is interesting is we could actually be colder than what I anticipated through the next 10 days or so. Uh, so maybe those warm phases of the MGO, maybe not quite as mild as I anticipated, but we'll wait and see. I'm not necessarily banning too much quickly to the cold. I think it's important to not jump too quickly on the models. It's easy to do that. Then the models back off. And then you have egg in your face, so to speak. But the, this is a very interesting change. Now, if we look at the uh, GFS ensembles, this is looking down. This is, in fact, the CFS V2. But I want to show you the GFS ensemble because it kind of slightly kind of backs up the idea more in the shorter term with this extension of the jet and moving out of North America and into, into Western Europe. Now, this is the upcoming five-day period. You notice here that as we move towards the period... Uh, day three through seven, which is the first through the sixth. So essentially the first week of December, you start to notice here that we have the, the deep negative here over Eastern North America. We've got that beautiful cross polar flow, high pressure uh, versus low pressure within the Arctic region. So you're following the, the, the isobars here between the, the negative heights and the positive heights. That is your cross polar flow. If ever I've seen one moving out of Siberia across the top, in the eastern North America, deepening the trough over eastern North America. But in turn, we're seeing a slight flattening of the, the upper flow over the North Atlantic. That suggests to me that we've got quite a firm Atlantic-driven pattern, positive to the south, negative to the north, positive NAO signal. But as we move through the period, if we look at the previous run, because it's still updating, let's go back to the 0Z run, and see what it's showing. Upcoming five days looks like this here. And again, it's looking at the big picture. We've got that beautiful cross polar flow and play through the loop. You notice here we're flattening that day, that, that day positive here for a short period of time. Go back just the next frame. You can see here we've got a bit of a uh, an extension here of the negative here. Notice we've not got any positive over Greenland. So we do have that positive NAO that is associated with the phase three, four, and five of the MJO. But then as we move through, this is important. 
Notice how the ridge starts to poke its way northwards, west, north, up towards Greenland here. And that is a colder look for the 6th through the 11th of December here. So certainly the middle portions of December, there is hints now starting to show up of something colder than perhaps I also anticipated. So this is something that we'll need to keep an eye on as we move forward here. Uh, the CFSV2 is looking like this here. So this is the upcoming week. Again, uh, looking down over the pole. So deep trough over Eastern North America. Got a lot of ridge in Europe, also out over the Atlantic as well. Got a generally overall relatively mild theme in the week two, you can see here that the, the positive shifts to the west, again, not necessarily sticking up towards Greenland. We've actually got a negative here. And then in the week three, you can see here that we're actually looking much, much more positive NAO signal here with a, a lot of region. Again, I kind of would take that with a pinch of salt with the CFS V2. But certainly very interesting things going on at the moment here. Even next week, the beginning of next week, Chilly high pressure and control. Then it looks as if we're going to start to see uh, the uh, the Atlantic moving in a little bit more bodily during the middle to second half of next week. Again, I'm still anticipating some fairly deep lows bringing wind and rain, if anything, to the UK and Ireland as we move through the middle and second half of next week. It's really once we get towards next weekend, things may be more interesting than perhaps I thought initially. So stay tuned, like and subscribe. Be sure to check out the uh, tropical, it's actually not a tropical outlook tomorrow, but we're going to actually recap the forecast versus what actually took place with the Atlantic hurricane season. And also we're going to do a bit of an update with La Nina also. So stay tuned for that. Lots going on and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.